Okay, this here is the, on the Great Pyramid's wastegate, they had a very simple valve on it, the bottom of it, down in front of the Sphinx Temple. So it's about 2,000 feet away from the Great Pyramid itself, going through an underground shaft. But the, the mechanism that they used to create the hydraulic pulse was actually just basically a simple check valve. This is a version. And all it, all the check valve, water check valve is, it has a flap that allows water to go through one direction and then not the other. That's all it is. So what they did is put the valve backwards. So now the, va the water actually does not go through it. And in, so it's normally closed. But then they flipped it upside down so you have a little gravitational spring. Gravitational acceleration opens up the valve. And so water will stream by here. And as it gets up enough velocity, it'll swing that shut, the valve shut. It'll stop the water instantaneously. And that creates a water hammer, a shockwave, a very uh, intense shockwave. So we're going we're gonna to put this on on the wastegate line. And the wastegate is actually within this structure here. And this would have been the Nile. That would be bigger. And the Sphinx would be approximately about six foot. It would be at a slight angle about here. So it gives kind of proximity. So what I'm going to do here taking the check valve and the water's not running at this moment but I'm just going to put it on there so I'm just taking it I'm going to put it in the reverse position and I'm just going to just going to screw it onto the, the end of the wastegate line which actually has a valve on it so I can put on a ton of water coming out upside down such so a naturally open position just like that and then to start it up you need to start the water going so all it does is it has water go through slams the valve shut and then that sends a shock wave straight up the line up to the base of the Great Pyramid. It has a re reflective elbow so it actually hits the reflective elbow from a horizontal and goes vertical and shoots it straight up in the Great Pyramid itself. And I mean there's variations on this. You use different springs and or weights and different flow rates and stuff but that's basically it very simple um, with it with the valve turns like this just by rotating the valve that changes the rate and the impact just by the gravitational spring and then if you do it all the way up It'll just naturally kind of shut. It doesn't have enough spring to it. We'll start it. Now just and I've actually, right here is a plug which I've put uh, pressure gauges on it. And I've gotten easily 125 PSI spikes at that point. For sure, that's that's really that's being very uh, conservative on that finger. Uh, here, these were actually two two nipples here, two very types of nipples. This is actually the pipe. So this is Schedule 80, the thick wall uh, PVC pipe, conduit pipe. So 
So it has a little flex to it. Resilient. And the first, well I've broken a bunch of these, but this basic PVC uh, nipple, which the check valve screwed onto, it actually cracked it all the way around it. And these are rated for 450 PSI. So then I went with a, a conduit one, the gray plastic's conduit. And the gray plastic, um, it's more flexible. It's uh, more, it doesn't crack as easily. So I tried that, and well, I cut it off because it, it broke that, it cracked that one too. It run for a while, and then it just eventually just break it through shock waves. It's truly intense impacts. So right now, I'm gonna go over to the pyramid itself for the pulse generator would be. I can see the, the wastegate line here. And this had been under about 100 feet of bedrock. So that just sends the shock wave straight up under the pyramid. This, this is the correct shape and size the scaled pyramid here, the Great Pyramid. Um, not a perfect position yet, but it will be. So we rotate it and straight underneath it. And right now I have this running with the, with the, uh, the dead end shaft. The dead end shaft's in dead end position, so it's actually the valve is shut, but you can run it with the dead end shaft with a either full open or a slightly reduced amount of, for back pressure, you change the back pressure, it changes the pulse rate and intensity. So what I'm going to do is just open it up just to, just to rate, I'm going to turn, open the valve, you know, hear the difference. actually running out this hose here. It can either be elevated or lower than the pyramid. It could have been down to the... If it was elevated for pressure, it changes the flow rate. It does elevate, and it'll elevate to about, well, to be higher than the, the top of the Great Pyramid. Now he's, I tend to get a lot of crap about the dead end shaft being a dead end, so I just run it normally in the dead end position. End of, end of the con controversy. So I shut that off, and then I do believe there was a, a small, like a perk shaft with a little ball valve or just a, a one-way valve at the back of the subchain with all the evidence shows it to be there. And so I actually added on this model, added, added the line. here, which just allows any gases to escape. So you can actually shut it off and that changes the impact. But if there were any gases in the chamber itself, that would allow it, the gases to be removed. Over this direction, we 
we have our, our descending passage coming down, and that's scaled uh, correctly, and the angle of the length's correct for the to match the Great Pyramid's descending passage. And that went 100 feet, well, it was a 300-foot shaft that went 100 feet below the bedrock and uh, went into that subterranean chamber. We've got a reservoir we've had for five years. We're upgrading. In the very near future, we've got a, we're going to use a a water tank, a potable water tank, that white plastic one over there. We'll so swap that out. And uh, we'll also have the water overflow, so it'll be not a lot of water, water running down and drilling. And for the most part, that's as simple as it gets. So, ta-da.